Today it is Introduction to Design Principles, Movement, Balance, Unity, Emphasis, Line, and Color. So design elements, design elements, oops, I'm not screen sharing. This is gonna be. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Take three. Now. Okay. So introduction to design principles, movement, balance, unity, contrast, emphasis, line, and color. Design elements are the building blocks of graphics, line, color, shape, and texture. And when you get into the assignment, you'll see that there are principles and that's how these things are used. And then elements are what's actually being used and how they're being utilized in design. So in this graphic here that I made, it shows all of these things. We have lines and we have shapes and then there's different colors and then um, shapes, even if they're flat looking and not made of pixels or a picture of something with actual texture, you can still create texture through variations in shapes. Lines, lines can be straight or curved. Lines can indicate motion or direction. Um, lines are really useful design tool to create motion and to create a sense of movement on the page. And I really love this illustration. It actually comes from a book called, it's a really old book I was given by a fellow design nerd friend and it's The Shape of Design. And this is just an illustration from this book. And I think it's really cool. And so the question here, how are lines used in this composition on this slide? Um, can anyone point out something that the lines are doing here? If you want to shout it out. They're going in curves, like the OODA loops. Yeah, so, and that would be indicating what the, that arrow is. Moving. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then the lines are creating these circular targets. And this shape also has a lot of rhythm to it as well. And there's contrast here. But just like this says, lines can indicate motion or direction, and they can be straight or curved. And they're being used here in several different ways, but the key way is that it's showing movement in this design. So color and contrast. We will have an entire week just focusing on color. So I'm gonna keep it pretty simple today, but um, color theory and color in design is one of my favorite things. I think it's a super fun week. Um, so this is just a super basic uh, intro to how color is used and we will get more in depth into this. And if any of you have taken art, you probably are familiar with the color wheel. So using color can enhance or detract from a composition. Um, color wheels help determine which colors are in greatest contrast. So if you are not familiar with the color wheel, uh, we have the primary colors and then colors that are opposite each other are contrasting colors. So in the color wheel, analogous colors are adjacent to each other. So you have these colors that all kind of complement and they're in the same family and then complementary colors are opposite. So blue and orange. Um, red and green. This actually is, <laughs> I remade this graphic and it's uh, a little bit off because it's, it should be the green and the red and then yellow and purple, which lined up. So this one didn't quite line up, but um, again, we will get into color theory super in depth in about three weeks or so. And it's really fun and interesting topic of like color psychology and how color, uh, determines how people perceive certain things and just favorite colors and all kinds of stuff like that. But keep in mind, contrast is the big thing you want to think about for this week and how the colors go together and complement each other. So color in design, 
I pulled off this website. This is, let me move y'all. I have, you can't, I don't think you can see it when I'm screen sharing. There we go. But when it screen records, you'll see yourselves because it's recording my, my Zoom. And I always have to move you out of my way. So I have you up at the top right now. Um, so color in design. So use color to label or show a hierarchy. You'll hear me say hierarchy so many times when we get into typography, especially create a hierarchy, create um, what that means is where do you want people to look first? What's the most important thing? And then how do you create a hierarchy of information to help people's eye move across your design? So use color to represent or imitate reality. And that's what's going on here with this uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium website. If you would like to go to the website to see it for yourselves, it's really cute. And that's actually a video of the otters swimming around on there. But I like this website because it has a unifying really cohesive um, aquarium color palette. So they use blues and greens and the photography carries a lot of the weight. If you've ever been there, like that black bar really mimics like the darkness of some of the exhibits. Um, and then on this website, those bright pops of orange are really popping out to make sure people see that information. What's the most important thing if you're going to this website? Most likely you wanna buy tickets. So they have tickets up there in that bright orange to indicate. And it's a contrasting color from the rest of this uh, ocean-based color palette that's going on. So that's using color to emphasize and separate. And then color is also being used to unify. So aside from these orange callouts, it's a very unifying color palette. So keep that in mind. And then color can also be used to decorate. And then you wanna use con color consistently. So uh, one of the big things that can really set people apart when they're beginning designers is knowing how to use color and start using it in a more elevated way. So you open up your swatches palette on Illustrator and you have those swatches already there for you. And it's real easy just to get in the mode of picking and choosing those. But if you get more sophisticated and start going off of primary colors or off of, you know, outside of the crayon box that's provided, your designs will look more elevated and sophisticated and they can look like you have more experience doing this than you might or you might have. So shapes. Shapes are enclosed objects that can be created by line or created by color and value changes that define their edges. I know that seems super basic. I'm just, I'm telling you what shapes are. You probably all know what shapes are, but it's something that you're going to have to think about in a completely different way now that you're studying graphic design. So circle, triangle, square, basic shapes, but a shape can be anything. It can be an organic shape or it could look like something, a silhouette. Um, there's all kinds of different shapes and you need to know how to use them. So texture, again, texture, these are some examples of texture, even though this is just flat color. So texture appears to have that tactical feeling like you could touch these and there would be like something there, even though in these examples, it's just flat. Um, so if you had, you can also use texture that's like real texture pulled from reality. If you had something like um, linen or corduroy or something like that as a background, it would be creating the illusion of a texture. Um, and then there's, you know, if you are going to print something on linen paper, you're actually designing with the intent to have that texture added in when it's actually created. But it can really help um, with your design if you think about this and how it can be used. So roughness, smoothness, and depth, that's all part of texture. Design principles. Design principles are a way in which elements are used together. So movement, balance, emphasis, and unity. Like I said, they have the elements, which are the blocks. Those are the, the, the actual uh, things that you're going to be using. And then the principles are how you use those things. So movement, movement is the use of lines, color, and repetition to create the illusion of motion. Curved forms or lines, repetition of geometric forms or fuzzy lines or outlines. Just from being a human in the world, in 
where in this world where you've grown up, you probably know a few things that indicate motion, even though you didn't intentionally learn that. Like if you've ever watched cartoons and you've seen, uh, you know, like using Looney Tunes is probably too old for most of you, but you know, if something falls, there's lines following it or comic books um, also have this kind of thing. So um, these things are more intuitive than we think. We just don't really know that we are, um, we're perceiving this in a way. And that is actually it, is great design. Yeah. I have a question. Is it like when a character gets scared or something and they run away and then you see like their silhouette and then like a bunch of lines going in the direction? Yeah, absolutely. So that would be a way that movement is being created. And I, of course, in animation, it's actually moving. Right. So comics would have been a better <laughs> example yeah, I was uh, to thinking describe of, this. Yeah, cartoons, I guess, are like still, there's still images that are kind of just put together. So there's at least one or two stills that are sitting there where it's like the character just was missing. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if it's comics or just uh, picture books, things like that, you'll see examples of movement be being created in illustration and flat uh, drawings all the time. So uh, what I did here with these squares, it almost appears like they're sitting on top of each other. Um, the gradient in this, in these arrows makes it feel like it's moving along in space. And then anything radial will always have that illusion of, of like a ripple effect or motion like that. Check the chat. Okay. So balance. Um, balance is the act of comparing or estimating two things, one against the other, and the contrast between. So empty space, white space, and filled space. Text and images, color and no color, and different colors, and textures against flat colors. So balance will be something that we'll probably talk a lot about when we critique each other's work. Does the whole composition feel balanced? Does it feel intentional? Um, this is a really great example of balance because again, it's four shapes. Well, technically one could be a line, but it could also be a really thin rectangle depending on how you wanna look at it. But there's two circles and a triangle and nothing has real physical weight. These are flat shapes on a page, but where they are placed is creating the illusion of balance in this illustration. So it looks like this, oops, This is going to happen all semester. It's not going to get better. Anytime I do a PowerPoint, it's going to be a little click crazy. So just bear with me. Um, but this big orange circle here looks like it weighs more than this tiny blue circle just because of where they are aligned on this page. And then that triangle is keeping them together. So these things can play upon what we already know and perceive of space and physics just from being, again, humans in the world that we are in. Um, and then it's also just how the eye perceives things and wants to line things up. So balance and composition, there are three different types of balance when using color, shape, and position. So symmetry, asymmetry, and radial symmetry. So symmetrical or formal balance, you can usually identify at least one of the three. So li lines of symmetry. So horizontal, and then there's vertical, and then there's diagonal. So when, again, when um, a lot of students are new to design, what I'll see a lot when you're laying text out on a page or things like that is just symmetry is your go-to. That's what you know how to do. That's what feels comfortable. So there's a paragraph of text, center it. There's a headline, you center it. And everything's boom, boom, boom. Center down the page, symmetrical, it's on the page because that's what is comfortable and easy and makes sense but there's a lot of other interesting ways to create balance without just lining everything up all the time. So symmetrical balance, here's again, an example, this triangle aligned. And then, uh, so this pencil is creating balance within this space, but so is this butterfly. So it's two completely different shapes, but where they're positioned within these grids is creating symmetrical balance. Because this empty space here and here is balancing out the weight of the pencil and then the butterfly right in the middle with its two wings. So a butterfly is a great example of symmetrical balance. 
So asymmetrical balance, this is, it's a little harder to do, but you'll start getting a feel for how much empty space needs to be there to balance out the used space. So because this arcs in here, it still feels balanced because we have all of this negative space right here. And then this one too is still there. If you were to move, there's an expression called um, like a near miss in design. So it's when like, you can't quite tell if something's off intentionally um, because if it's like, so if you have something tilted, it looks intentional, but if you're just off like a little bit, it's it feels wrong because we automatically want things to be lined up a certain way. And then radial, um, things start from the center and come out balanced all the way around. This one has three points of radial symmetry, and then this one just goes out from here. Now, these are actually illustrations from the Adobe PowerPoint that I kept. <laughs> It's when we get into these where I was, I just couldn't use the that PowerPoint anymore because their examples for these were not up to my standards. So unity, the uh, unity, the correct balance of composition or color that produces a harmonious effect. So harmonious is a great word. It means that everything in your design is working together and looks like it fits and looks like it's intentional. Intentional is another key thing that you wanna focus on when you're creating your designs. Does this look like it was an accident or does it look like a designer planned and thought this out? I like this logo and I pulled that off as an example because it's got these, um, these sharp letters and then this really beautiful organic uh, icon. But because of the line weight and the color, it still has a lot of unity. It looks like it goes together. They fit, everything's balanced right. It has some good space letting this breathe. And these lines, it's, the, it's really just the thickness of the lines and the line weight that really helps these complement each other. Oops, went all the way at the end. And then I thought this was a good example too because this logo here has, um, the the nested in there really well. It has some nice uh, beachy little detail here. So it feels fluid like the ocean. And then the bakehouse is nested up below balancing out the the. And it's just a nice little unifying uh, piece of art or design. So emphasis, emphasis is to express a, or express with particular stress or force. So in this image here, Obviously, what's that trying to emphasize? This is a completely different color and it has a different face. So it's emphasizing this part of the image right here by everything else being uh, the same. It's gray and then that pink little smiley face pops out. And then this logo right here, the Petite Professional, um, Obviously, Petite is the most significant uh, identifying brand marker for this logo, and that's why it's called out. It's the largest, and it's a whole different typeface than anything else on this logo. So remember that when you want to emphasize something, a lot of times you want to use contrast, and that can be done through color, shape, and all of these other elements to help it stand out. So in summary, the basis of good design is to use, is use of design elements and their thoughtful application in the form of design principles. Clearly identify what you're trying to accomplish, use design to convey your message and brainstorm alternatives. So that might sound a lot like what I was talking about last week. You want to think of how you can execute and solve this problem and then push for more original, more creative ideas. Once you've got a good base, you can always go back and reevaluate and is this the best solution? Okay, so stop sharing for a minute. Anybody have any questions about what I just went over? Okay, well, this is all going to make sense when we get into the assignment. Let me exit here. And you can download this PowerPoint and reread it if you need to at any point. It is on the module.
Give me just a second here. So this is a link that's also on the module. Let me go here. So you can get the PowerPoint again here if you need that. This link is right here, what makes good design. And it, um, I like this link because it has these really well-designed posters for the principles and elements. So elements of design, line, shape, value, space, size, texture, color. And then it'll explain each one and then you can keep going and it will have the principles as well. So you do not have to memorize these. It's not something that I'm going to quiz you on, but it's a, this is what's going to help you as we move forward in this course. Hopefully these will become things that are just uh, things that you're able to do. So you're able to start seeing designs, breaking it down, and you know how to create balance or you know how to create visual weight and you'll start understanding these things and put them into practice. But if you ever get stuck with anything, if you ever don't know where to start, you don't know what's going to look good, go back to these, this foundation and these design principles and you can pull from that to help you get started and to know if something's good or not. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, so Next thing we're going to do is put a little composition into practice. Did you all get your supplies, just like paper or something random? So I'll give you a minute if you need to gather that. Let me see if I can actually push my computer back so you can see what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna go too far. Wouldn't that be awful if I just pushed it right off the desk? <laughs> okay, you can kind of see. That's about as low as I can go here. So I have here on my desk, just some orange paper left over from a Halloween craft I did. Then I just have a white piece of printer paper. And all you're gonna do, it doesn't matter if this is leaves or berries or pennies, whatever you have around you. Um, and this could even just be like a flat surface on the table. And all you're gonna do is just drop randomly whatever your uh, secondary paper is onto your canvas. And it should be random. And there's a point to this, I promise. So you can do it a couple times if you decide you don't like it. If everything comes together in one clump, that's fine. Um, but just, you know, it's supposed to be random and just kind of see what happens. So I did this once earlier. And then if you can see, it ended up just kind of being like, like this. <laughs> so then, what I want you to do, and I just assumed you would all have camera phones, but if you don't, um, just kind of follow along <laughs> or, or make it work, it's fine. Um, but I want you to take a picture of what you just did almost completely straight on. So you can get over the top of it, but just take a picture down on it and then send that picture to your computer and I'll show you what I did. Post-its are perfectly fine. Oh, that's a direct message. <laughs> if anyone else wants to use post-its, you can. So I got this, this is my picture of my, uh, of me doing this earlier. And then open it in Photoshop if you don't have it downloaded yet, or if you don't have a camera, this is what you can do. Let me stop sharing for a second. You can actually just get more pieces of paper or anything around 
And I want you to create like um, almost like a viewfinder for it. And you're going to put this around the edges to crop. And I'll show you. Hold on just a second. I'm just responding to some of your messages. Honestly, whatever you have is totally fine. It's going to be fine. Um, so this is mine from earlier. And then this is a photo from when I did this in class the first time. And you'll see here how I have this cut out frame. So after I dropped it, we put this frame over it to find the composition. But if you have Photoshop and you wanna use Photoshop, what you can do then is crop in a little bit smaller than where your document is. And I want you to find the interesting composition in this random form. So even though this was totally random, this is something you didn't plan for, there's a good design composition in here somewhere. And I want you to find that. And I'll show you here. So do I crop in and do something that has more repetition and texture? And maybe start with something like that. Do I come over here where there's some negative space and create something where the negative space balances out these big shapes? Or do I just widen my entire frame and try to find the balance here and then cut out maybe this bottom one that is kind of astray. And again, if you don't have Photoshop or you didn't have a access to a camera on your phone, you can keep your page here with your random elements and then you can get additional, like even if it's like a book and you can create your crop by using that paper and find, find that composition. Is everybody following along? No, because I want you, so once you've got that and you've got it cropped to something that you feel like is a design, so it's random and then you're making that design decision. So you're finding the balance or you're finding the repetition or you're doing something that has negative space. So once you've got a composition that you like, I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms. I want you to share it and analyze each other's designs. Do you need some like five minutes? Yeah? Let me know. I'm if you drawing know. a blank on how to crop on Photoshop. Oh, I can show you. I see these so, are the things where yeah. I assume everybody knows how to crop on Photoshop. I am so yeah. sorry. I'm just drawing a blank on that part. I have my image pulled up in Photoshop and I'm ready to do the rest. But okay, it's just it make sure you have your toolbar open and it's uh, a couple tools down. And when you click on it, it automatically will pull up the crop and you can just pull it in and around. My toolbar is tiny and on the side. My toolbar is too tiny? No, mine is. Oh, yours is? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Again, sometimes I just assume that you know how to do things like that, um, just because I, I'm just so used to it. But if you don't want to deal with Photoshop right now, again, just use something else to create your crop tool. And then you can just take a new picture of it to share it with the class, or you can just show them what you've got going on actually on your desk. So I'll give you a couple more minutes. And if this seems really weird, this, <laughs> this was an actual assignment that I took when I was in school. So when I started graphic design, everybody first has to take just these design classes in the art department. And 
this was like an actual, like we would then have to go glue these down and mount them and treat them like they were really like pieces of art, but they were, they're kind of cool. <laughs> so, I mean, I have orange paper on printer paper, but if you looked at that example of like black, the black squared paper, things like that, sometimes randomness can really help you break through a barrier too. And then you get to find where that composition is. That's kind of why I like photography as well, because you're, you're capturing something that's already in front of you a lot of the time, like with journalism or um, like portrait photography, that subject is there in front of you. And then you're finding that art within your own viewfinder. So, okay. Anybody need more time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another minute. Okay. Um, when I put you in breakout rooms, I want you to pick as a group your favorite one. And then when we come back, the favorite's going to share. Let me know when you're ready. So I think most of you gave me the thumbs up. I didn't see a few of you. I am ready. Okay. All right. If yours isn't ready, it probably won't be the favorite, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> No, not a big deal. I'm gonna go to the breakout rooms. I'm gonna do four and let's go. Are you done? Cool. Okay, I'll give everybody else a couple more minutes. I'll say five. Professor, just out of general curiosity, how long does it typically take like the average student to do that first assignment? Yeah. My my first group, I want to say took like 30 minutes. And then after that, although the second and third one didn't come out as much as I liked, like those ones went by pretty quick, but I'd have to say it took me about an hour, hour and a half. That is probably fair. So to be honest, hold on, let me tell them five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not forget that they're in their rooms. And <laughs> to be honest, that's probably accurate if it takes you about an hour. Um, I changed the assignment this semester. Last semester, it was overwhelming response that it was too, the first assignment's too hard. So what it was last semester, everyone had to draw the exact same thing, exactly like I drew it. And I gave them a step-by-step -step tutorial. And it had all kinds of things in it, like gradients and pathfinders and all of those things. And um, they come out, some come out looking exactly like they're supposed to, and some do not. So I thought it would actually be easier to create something within your own skill set. But to do the previous assignment, it would probably take you about an hour to sit there and follow along with all the steps. So that's that's probably fair. And I'm glad that the second and third one were faster. <laughs> You're just my first one was fastest. <laughs> and the second and third one took me hours. Cause I couldn't <laughs> figure out how to work the the clicker and the extra stuff on the side. And my son was getting frustrated with me. <laughs> so that's the thing that no one really and I even forget, and I try to do more of that now that no one really tells you is that this is kind of like a, a, like a motor skill too. Like you're learning how to use the mouse, you're learning how to move your hands and everything at the same time. So um, I always get people telling me like, oh, I wish I could draw, I can't mm -hmm. do this or that. And I always tell them it's like, it's mind muscle memory. It's like playing a sport. So I, I, when I was in high school, I played basketball and I just stand out there shooting free throws for hours and hours and hours until like, I can still really impress people today when I pick up a basketball, because it's just my muscle memory. And so doing these things, and that's why I try to slow things down and to be really aware of that when talking to you as, as newbies in this is that I do so many things intuitively without even realizing that I'm doing it. So, um, if it took you too long, you probably picked something that was too hard <laughs> outside of your I don't think set. I did. I just couldn't do it. I'll, I'm looking forward to seeing your screen then and having you show me. Um, and then I lost the color to half of my fruit. 
Okay, we'll go over that. I mean, when you're first learning these things, you can click on something and then just send your whole design out of whack and not know and have to like figure out what you did. But if you're, if you know how to get your tools back up, if you know how to undo and you just kind of slow down and go step by step, it, it should take you about an hour. <laughs> so I'll make sure we, I help you out with that before class is over today. Let's see, I told them five minutes, but I can't remember when I said that. Has it been five minutes? <laughs> Even just getting into the Photoshop right now, that was like yeah, skills that I don't have. <laughs> Arian, was it when you were setting up your gradient that you lost your color? I kept accidentally getting going back to grayscale and then having yes. to undo it. Yeah. So I, I, if, if you just uh, click on gradient, it'll turn it to grayscale. You have to drag your swatches in to the gradient. And I couldn't even get my swatches out. I couldn't figure out where they were at. So everything, if you ever lose anything, just go up to window and then find it. It's always in, in <laughs> it'll be a check mark by it. And if it goes away, you can get it back. So don't, don't panic. Or it's behind another tool. I feel so like, those I are need, the two. like I need tutoring for this class. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just start getting used to how the programs work. And then lots of things are similar across the various ones and it'll just become more intuitive it's funny i sit down at something like like canva do you guys are not wait yeah canva i always get canvas and canva mixed up so i sit down at canva or anything in like like windows like word i'm like this is so frustrating i don't think this is intuitive i can't move stuff wherever i want to move it and i get so irritated and i'm just like i'm not using this <laughs> but other people if you it find it easier because there are constraints put on you so that you can't mess things up. So, but once you have, you know, the power that is this Adobe software, hopefully you'll never want to go back. Okay. I'm going to close these rooms. I think that might've been more than five minutes. I totally lost track, but that's okay. All right, we got one room still waiting on. They're having too much fun. Here they come. All right, welcome back. I hope that was fun, if not a little weird, but it'll always be interesting here. Um, okay, so what I want you to do is I guess whoever you chose could be the person that talks unless you really don't want to and then you can have someone else in your group talk and i'll just go down through the breakout rooms and I want you to try to explain why that was chosen the best you can using some of the things that we discussed some of the reasoning. So think about balance texture repetition movement uh, all of those things and just practice talking about design. Okay, so we'll start with uh, room one, which was Ashley, Brianna, Jacob, and Priscilla. Okay, so they all nominated, okay, I'm back. Okay, so they all nominated me to present. I thought Ashley was cute. It was a heart, so I just wanted to put that out there, um, but I'll show you mine. So <laughs> I thought, I 100% thought when we were doing this that we were gonna have to put paper down and then draw something over it, like the tarot paper, like in the elementary school, something kind of like that. So I was like, okay, so I threw this down and I was thinking, okay, the salt flats in Utah, uh, a totem pole, uh, like the monsters in those really like bad app store games that flood YouTube ads. So um, I just had this green paper lying around because I just like trying to get used to it. But I threw this down and I thought this was like a funny shape that when you look at it, it looks almost kind of like, like a torso or like a person. It's got like a really weird structure that looked 
like organic but also had the same weird balance so like I thought that was interesting um but I was 100% ready to start drawing until you set paper and then I was like oh my god so I went back over to the other thing but I just thought it was interesting and all of us had this weird thing where it like the had this weird symmetry at some point in it um but I, again Ashley's was really neat it was a heart and she was the only one that I saw that used um it was like writing on the paper scraps so that was really neat that it oh, like okay. had that also like so the texture on top of the colors and everything else so if we just focus on this one here if all of you can kind of just imagine it even being the opposite way so that's a very that's a decision you know so here it's it's horizontal and it's creating that symmetry, even though it's not like super perfect symmetry, it has that balance on either side. So yeah, if you wanna go ahead and flip it, um, or even should I do it like rotate, sorry, go to rotate. Um, I got lost, wait. So image, go over to image. Uh -huh. Oh, there we go, yeah. So should I do like- um... Yeah, rotate clocks. And it could also be that we've just looked at it the other way. So that feels right. But to me, this doesn't feel balanced anymore. It needed that like base and that weight across the bottom. And I, so even that decision just to have that horizontally is, is a design decision. And that's the weird thing we're doing here today. <laughs> so I hope that makes it make a little more sense. Ashley, I want to see yours. Do you mind sharing? Not at all. Okay. Okay, so I've never used Photoshop before, so don't judge me. I can't even click out of that box that's, that's covering fine. it. But uh, yeah, I felt like it fell into this cool heart shape, and I was like, sweet. I didn't even mean for that to happen. See, there you go. Just and manifesting all this great, you know, love into my life. Yeah, it's like it's like reading tea leaves, right? Like you have to find <laughs> you have to find the meaning within this randomness, but you're, you're still doing the composition. You're thinking about it from a design standpoint and figuring out where the composition is in this random, random paper. So cool. All right, let's go to room two, which is Corey, Daniela, and Miguel. Okay, I'll be sharing, let me see, screen share. Sure. All right. So I actually didn't have any pink paper. Um, I just did a bunch of blue paper and then uh, I was like rotating it on preview and my computer kind of glitched. So I just screenshotted that. And that's what I came up with. Um, I just like the way they offset and then the different colors. So it was really interesting because when we all took our pictures, he said, he, like he said, when you just put it in there and then rotated it, it gave him these colors. So it was really cool for us to kind of look at it and just see that the colors came from that uh, sea green bluish paper and then just turned into the pink and then the bright blue. Yeah, that's, I mean, it looks cool. If I was in, if I was in a modern art museum and this was on the wall, I'd be like, oh. That's very interesting and I would analyze it. <laughs> so, I mean, what makes something good or bad? It's, you know, it's in design, I, I already told you last week, like design has to have a tool, like a purpose, a communication standpoint. But what we're really doing here is just design fully based off of like art alone. So what feels right, what looks right, it doesn't have to communicate anything specific. It just has to have like a vibe of something that's cool. So I like that you accidentally did this and you're like, oh, there we go. Let's stop. Sometimes knowing when to stop is a big part of being a designer. So that's, this is a probably one of the more interesting ones for sure. All right, group three. There we go. Which would be Ariane, Lysander, and Paige. Okay, so the group nominated me to share mine, and let me share it real quick. Um, 
just like a preface, I did not have paper, so I used gobstoppers because that's what was around me. So that's what I'll be sharing. Um, so. Okay, can you see it? Mm -hmm. All right, that's what I got. So um, I think that they chose this one because they liked the element of color involved, different colors. And then also like the offset of the straight lines and the spheres, I feel like they kind of offset each other well. Yeah, that does. The shapes create a really interesting contrast. And the only thing is that like, if there's a grid in anything and if this is the near miss I'm talking about, like it's just a little bit off, I have to straighten that. <laughs> if it was completely diagonal, then it would be more like asymmetrical balance, but it's just like a little tilted and I've, I've got to straighten that in my, in my eye or like things like that will drive me crazy. But right. I like how accidentally you have like you have all of this empty space, but then this green gobstopper is down in there and it really does create a balance and leads you through. So there's like some linear connection between these. Mm -hmm. And I don't, do you guys think this is weird <laughs> that we're looking at paper and gobstoppers and like glitches on a computer and thinking like, okay, what design things are happening here? Because hopefully my goal is to mess you up for the rest of your lives and you will not look at things the same way ever again and you'll be like oh look at the way that this is complementing this and contrasting this and there's movement and rhythm and repetition so if this is weird just wait and hopefully it gets a lot more <laughs> weird as we progress into the semester but this is really unique and fun too good job and then we have one more room, room four, Martha, Melissa, and Star. Okay, they chose mine. So I'll show you it. I did on Illustrator because my Photoshop just wasn't working. So I just cropped it on there. Yeah. I'll click. Okay. Oh, so this was mine. I just used something random. Um, and they liked mine because they said it looked pleasing and like clean. And nice, so. And I think it looks like smooth and then like rough, I guess, with the textures. Yeah, so you have um, some texture automatically yeah. in there because you used leaves. Um, I would even say the tails of the leaves on the left and then going into that green in the right, like it still kind of flows and then right over the bottle cap too. So you kind of have a nice high line, like right in the middle to kind of look across. Mm -hmm. So there's some movement happening. And then yeah. those organic shapes of the leaves with that bottle cap. Can mm -hmm. anyone tell me what that's creating? Contrast. Dimension. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So again, like just imagine yourself walking through some modern art museum and this is on the wall in front of you, just like five foot by whatever and it's big and you'd be like oh this is interesting and <laughs> you would analyze it and think about it and think about the composition and how that's creating different points of tension or harmony and that's all principles and elements of design working there so okay so let me take the screen back Oops. Okay. So good job. Like I said, I don't know if you all think that was really weird, but I hope you thought it was a little bit fun and you can start grasping how like just compositionally things can be laying out on a page. So you don't always have to, the reason I like that is because it's random and then you're finding the composition. Like I mentioned during the lecture, symmetry is always a newbie's go-to. It's comfortable. You know what to do lining things up, centering things feels comfortable. Um, but you can have some fun and still find balance and use different principles of design. It doesn't always have to be 
like neat and tidy, you can kind of experiment. Um, the next thing we are going to do is go over the assignment for the week. So in this week's assignment, you're going to take all of this principles and elements of design stuff, and you're going to apply it in a real concrete way. So um, I'm gonna go over the assignment. And then after that, if you don't have questions about how to do anything, you are free to go and you will have to do your discussion board um, and you can stick around for questions too. So what does the discussion board do? Uh, next week. So you have a week to do it. So let me screen share. out of here over to illustrator oh let me go so oh here's the discussion board if you haven't taken a look at it yet let me make sure it should have gone live ah <laughs> it did not so let i will make sure that goes live that's why i like student view because i will forget um but here is your assignment I didn't remake these videos. These are still older videos, but it's the same assignment. So you have a video explaining part one, and then you have a video explaining part two. So you're free to watch these and pause them and go over them in detail. A lot of what you learned last week will help because you'll be making shapes and doing things in Illustrator once again. So you're gonna start by, you can either download this document or you can do this by hand in your sketchbook, take a picture of it and upload. I like doing it by hand. Again, it's that quicker, like quick answers. You don't have to spend a lot of time obsessing over it. Um, you just are doing it like an exercise. So this should take you uh, like half the time, like even less than half the time of your, your part two of this project. Part two is the important part of the project. Um, I think it was, was it Lysander who asked me how long I expected last week's assignment to take? And that should have probably taken you about an hour. Like if you did it within an hour, then that's about right. If you did it faster, then you are getting really good at these programs and great job. If it took you more, then we need to stop and review like how to use some of the tools and help you get better at the program so that it doesn't take quite that long. Um, okay, so as I was saying, you can download this Illustrator document and you can start here. And if you do, it will look something like this. And you have your elements and you have your principles. So you're going to pick four elements and four principles. And you can, like, again, you can make a grid in your sketchbook and you can write in and you can pick line, you can pick color, you can pick value, you can pick space. And you can do this by hand. And then you can sketch in each of your little squares that you create and do this. So the goal of this is to intersect. So you're gonna pick the principles pattern and the element is line. So what can you do that uses line to create a pattern? Well, here are some shapes and you can pick from these shapes or like I said, you can absolutely do this in your sketchbook and you can make your grid and then you can make lines that are in a pattern. <laughs> I think it's faster. I feel like your brain will work faster than moving things around in Illustrator. But when we started going virtual, I made this in a digital version too, just as, as a tool. But like I said. Can you show your sample again? The one you just oh, drew? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really messy. So it's just here. It's really like just a grid. So if you were doing this, you'd go four by four. And then you'd write the principles down one side and the elements down another side. And then like say, so right now I have the elements 
and I moved in line. And then I, for the principles, I had pattern. So it'd be like that. And then color, I have a color. And then emphasis. So I do line and pattern. And so really I would just think about creating a pattern with lines. Stripes is the easiest, quickest thing I can think of for that off the top of my head. You don't have to spend a lot of time. It's a thinking exercise. So then I go over and it'd be line and emphasis. So if I was making lines, maybe I make one line. So see one line is emphasized. I move down to color. It's color and pattern. So maybe I make circles. Wait, that would be, yeah. So me actually doing more of this is gonna make it harder on you guys to think of different things, but so I'm gonna stop, but see how, so it's color and pattern. I colored in some of them. And then this one color and emphasis, I just colored in one. Um, if I go back to screen sharing and that's why like, I don't want to go through and do all of these. It, you're just going to start thinking of exactly what I thought of. <laughs> and I want you to kind of explore different ways you can do this. If you do it by hand, it really is just, I think your brain can work faster, especially if you're newer at these programs. And then again, just take a picture of this and upload it. Or if you do it digitally, you can um, save it as a PDF and upload it. You could even like brainstorm in your sketchbook and then go and do these in the computer, but you can, you know, so if color and pattern, if you're making some kind of pattern. Then you could, you know, you can color these pretty easy within Illustrator. Um, but you're going to go through and you're going to do each square. So whatever you pick, you get to leave some of them off. Some of them are harder than others. Um, I think texture can be hard digitally, but when you draw, you can kind of, sometimes you can make textures easier. Um, what else? There's some that hardly ever get done. And then there's some that get done all the time. So after you complete this entire grid, you're going to pick one of them and you're going to pick, or you're gonna pick two of them. You're gonna pick one square to kind of base it off of. And you can change it a lot, but if you really liked the way that say your color and pattern turned out, you can either copy from that or pull from that. And then you're going to make a poster. And again, you'll have a video right here and I explain in detail. And I also give you the elements in review right here. So you can watch these videos and you can read the directions. And then um, you can even look at some examples. So I have six examples here. I can show more, um, but here's another, you know, another example of how if it's line and emphasis, and then you take that and you apply it to a poster. I do want you to utilize color I get a lot of these done in black and white. If it's, you know, a hard jump uh, for you and you're barely getting by, pick, again, work within your skill set. Pick something simple. Something like this is just triangles and circles and it's really effective. You're going to add the element and principle to your poster. And what you're creating is essentially an informational poster. Like say we're in a design setting, like the lab, a lab class. These would be posters that would go up like around the room to show the different principles and elements of design. So you pick two, you're showing how they work together with a visual, and then you're adding the text to the poster. And again, here's six examples. These are really good ones. Um, but see how simple some of them can be, like movement in line? That looks like rain. So it's moving. Uh, and I will say that a lot of them just naturally cross over. So um, like when I said, try to utilize color if you can. Um, like 
color is something that has to be contained in something, right? So you probably will use shape or line if you choose color. So it's not like when it's elements that you you can't, you, there's no way you can just do one. You have to use other things to contain things like color. Um, if you have line, uh, you'll just you'll just see as as you do it. Um, but don't feel like, you know, oh, I picked this. I can't use this. It's okay if it crosses over. But the main goal is that if you pick, say, color and emphasis, when I look at your poster, I should be able to know and decide that it's these two things. It might be sometimes it'll be a different, like I'll guess something different at first, but it's written on there. So having it written on there will tell me what it is. And if I read those words and see that image, they sh I should definitely go together. So that's your goal to make it obvious, make it, um, you know, communicate whatever those two things are, you're communicating that through your visual. Do you have any questions about that, about the assignment specifically? Does, do you, who's in the camp of, I wanna see more examples or I don't wanna see more examples because it'll take my ideas away. <laughs> no, no more? Yeah, I feel like I that, wanna, oh, sorry, Corey. It's probably the same thing you're about to say. I don't wanna lose my ideas. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I felt like that was enough examples to like get an idea of what. Yeah, that's, yeah. And the same thing with me doing the grid. If I do too much, it's just gonna like, I feel like stifle you or you'll be thinking of exactly what I did. Um, but I do have classes that are like, no, we need to see, like we need to see more, but that's, that's what you're doing. You have those six examples there. It's 11 by 17. So it should be um, that format and it should be vertical. And so they all go together nicely. Um, but yeah, the videos are there for you. I think that they explain it really well. Hopefully what you did last week will get you more comfortable in Illustrator. Um, lots of things I get asked and I have specific videos on them, like how to add a background color, which is pretty simple if you are familiar with these programs. But if you're brand new, that might be something that you don't know how to do. So I'll post the link to that. Um, let's see, let me review. I put in the module some things that you'll need to learn. Just things that, so outline text, converting text to outlines, that might be handy when you're exporting. I'll show you how to do that really quickly. Uh, vector is in your vocabulary words. That just means we're using Illustrator. It's scalable. It's not pixel based. Um, the direct selection arrow is how you will pick things up and move them around. And I, if any of you have explored some of the tutorials, I have a tutorial going over the toolbar and then artboard. Um, if you hear me say, hold on, let me screen share real quick. So if you hear me say artboard, what that means is that is the space, that's your document size. So that's the, see how it even says artboard one. And then in uh, Illustrator, if you add, adding pages is just adding artboards and you can just click over here on the side and, and add more. But you only need one for this assignment. And you'll see here, if I select everything, which was command A, select all, everything that's on and unlocked on my, on my document, you'll see that the text that I have in this PDF isn't actually typable text. So what that means is I can't edit it. I have converted it to outlines. So now this text is just a shape and it's grouped together. So I can move it around. And that way, when you open this document, it doesn't change the text because you don't have the same font and get all weird, you know it's gonna open up and these are going to be the same size for you and you can move them around. So if you need to convert your text to outlines, and this might happen if you pick a really unique font, it may, or you download a new font, um, it may not export properly. So if you need to convert text to outlines, so see, this is typable text. It has that line underneath it. And when I get my text tool over here, I can click in here and highlight and I can actually retype what it says. Type my name. 
And then if I click on this with my selection arrow, which is right here, it's the selection tool. So I've grabbed it with the selection tool and then I go to type, create outlines. And now that type is once again, a shape just like these are. So you might need that skill. And then um, over here, so this is 11 by 17. And my artboard is sized that size. And again, I have a tutorial that'll walk you through how to do all of this. But if you don't know how to start your new document, you go to File New. And you can pick 11 by 17 here and make sure the orientation is set to vertical. And then make sure it's set to inches. And I have a tutorial on how to start a new document and how to add a background color. And I'll post those for you to follow along if you're brand new. And even it's OK if even the littlest thing feels overwhelming. And if you have some uh, familiarity with these programs and this is too slow for you, then you can just wow me with your beautiful designs when we start to actually do projects. So I'm excited to see what you create this week. Um, let me just make sure I've gone over everything. Discussion board, project, and that's it this week. So as you do the project, it'll help you understand what we discussed in the lecture. So. Um, that's it. If you don't have any questions about last week's assignment or anything else specifically, you're free to go and start working. Um, if you want to stick around for one on one help, uh, I will be here. And good job with this uh, with the paper assignment. You guys did a really good job with that. That was fun to see what you created. Thank you. Um, I just had a really quick question, and I don't at all want to sound rude or like I'm pushing you for the grades of assignments, but I just wanted to know if there was going to be some kind of feedback or something like to see how we're doing with the with these apps, like if our deliverables are actually good or not to know kind of where we are. That is an excellent question. So I should have added, and if anyone popped off, I'll put it in an announcement. We're going to critique this project next week. So we're going to go over everybody's projects as a group next week um, because it's a big project. Something like the assignment last week, I'll probably just give you a score, but I will rate it. Um, but really, when it comes to things like that, where I'm making you do it so you can learn something, it's almost like a pass fail situation. If you do it and you try, you're going to get your points unless it's just really bad. <laughs> I that. Um, but the projects, and I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I forgot to screen share that and I had it pulled up. Um, I will post it in announcements. Um, this is your grading rubric. So when I grade your projects, this is what I use to get to your score. This one's out of 25. I um, have recently changed them to 20. One semester people were not meeting my expectations. So I added effort because uh, if I didn't think that certain people tried hard enough, they didn't get as good of a score. But you will be out of 20, so you won't have the effort category. Um, you haven't proven that you need that yet. Uh, and so it'll be clarity of message, effectiveness of presentation and layout, creativity and originality, and assignment specifications. This is what I was talking about. Like You will get these five points by following the directions. As long as you follow the directions, you will get these five points. Um, clarity is where for this particular assignment, it'll come into play like, do I understand what the principles and elements are that you were trying to communicate? And then, um, and it's listed here really clearly. I will make sure I post this so you can see, but it breaks down this assignment and how you get your scores. And again, if you're unhappy with your score, you can always redo an assignment or because we're having a critique, that is your chance to essentially defend your design choices. So does that help? Yeah, so your grades aren't pulled out of thin air and I'm like, I like this one, I don't like this one. You'll get, uh, and when I give you your grade in there, I usually label them 
in each category, and then you'll have a total. Anybody else have a question about anything? Yeah. Marianne, I know you needed technical help. Um, I just had a question about my, I guess, I want to make sure that this kind of, I'm going to share the screen. Okay. So like something like this is okay, even though yeah. it's it's not like super great. Um, I obviously need to add one more, but I guess like I was having a problem. I need to just rewatch it while watching the tutorial at the same time and pausing. I just spent so much time kind of messing with like trying to download Illustrator that I didn't rewatch the tutorial because I feel like I need to be doing it at the same time to like, you know, because I'm like for me to just fill in the color of these shapes took me so long. And I feel like I should have been able to just highlight it and fill in the color, but I didn't really understand how to do that. Like it kept changing colors and I was just so confused. But, do you mean uh, once you got to the gradient portion of it or just filling them in solid? Just filling them in solid. Okay. So. Like, should I already have, I, I feel like when I was watching you do it originally, like you started the design by filling in the color and then just replicating that. And by the time I figured that out, I was like, see, I kind of like went over, I went over all these, I guess, white dots and then put these over them. And I was like, okay, I'm slowly figuring it out. So I'm sure it'll come to me, but it definitely took me a little bit over an hour. And I was like, all right, I think I just need to go through the tutorials and stuff a few more times. Yeah, it's definitely a situation of like work smarter, not harder, where you'll start learning where you can duplicate and grabbing stuff all together and you can group stuff and change it all as a whole. So like you have, I see in your layers, you have all of your circles on one layer. Kind. So you, yeah, on layer four, isn't that all of your grapes? I was going to say, yeah, I feel like uh, I can't, you know how you had subtracted the first layer to get rid of the background or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, when I tried to do that, yeah, it got rid of. <laughs> so I don't have an original, like, I don't know, mine's kind of all over the place, I guess, with how I tried to do it. So like, I, I, <laughs> I'm so you're sorry. Fine. Um, I was telling one of the breakout rooms because they finished early that I used to give this assignment by making you draw the exact same thing in the exact same way. And the overwhelming response was that it was too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and it would take about an hour or more for the students to watch the video and copy exactly what I'm doing step by step. Um, so I changed this this semester to let you draw whatever you wanted to, but still getting comfortable with where the shapes are and where the different tools are cool. and all of that. So maybe it is a little bit easier to do the exact same thing, but I also like the aspect of like, you could, you could watch the tutorial I did and copy and do the exact same thing I did and then apply those same things to whatever you're drawing. So yeah, I wasn't sure about that either. I didn't know if you wanted us to like not pick the fruits you had done in the video. As um, long as, so like I said, this is one of those where it's, it's an assignment to get you comfortable and learn how to do something. So as long as you're in here exploring and trying to draw and practicing, it's a pass fail situation. So you're totally fine. What you have here is fine. Sweet. Um, so make sure I'm on the right track as far yeah, as there's a, there's a lot of things that you can probably do that would make that would have made that like a lot faster. And it's just learning things like grabbing things all together right. and and grouping things together and things like that. Right. I feel like once I play around with this, uh, it will become more comfortable. So I, I look forward to it. This wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like it was, I mean, there was some stressful moments, but it wasn't like I felt like it was time wasted or anything, you know. Okay. Nobody should be crying. Same way. 
like I had the same way before. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Professor. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Okay. Um, who's next? Or do, are some of you just sticking around to see what other people ask? I know some people like to do that, so that's fine too. Professor, actually, do you, I was gonna ask you, if I send you an email, like um, how are you at, like responding back to emails? Like, are you someone that does it like a certain day that she checks her emails or she checks it before she goes to bed? And re answers like every professor is a little bit different. So sometimes responses take longer if I need the help. I try to check it at least once a day. Um, when that is, is probably a little bit different. It'll probably be like, I'm really active like during the day when I'm at work at the studio. And then when I go home in the evening, that's where I'm like more distracted and probably not always. So I'm more of like an early morning, like throughout the day responder. Mm -hmm. um, but you should get an email response within a day or two. And if you don't, I probably didn't see it or I started my response in my head and forgot to answer. But I'm pretty good about, <laughs> about responding via email. And then uh, if it's something where we can't set, like if you're emailing me to ask when we can set up like a one-on-one -on -one and it's about something that's turned in, if we have that on the calendar, then don't you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to meet with you, but we don't have time right before this class for you to like then meet and then finish your project. I'm always good about like giving you time or, or making accommodations for that. Okay. Cause usually like, I don't have questions for the homework until I'm actually doing it. And yeah, so that first sure. assignment, like it did take me forever, but it's because <laughs> I'm so, I'm not tech savvy, which is why I took this class is because I wanted to learn to be better at it and to be not scared of it be more aggressive like instead of being like I don't want to touch it I want to touch it so I get better at it but that fruit assignment I mean Hard. I wanna, I'm not gonna lie I mean it probably took me like a day and a half but it was because I would get frustrated and then walk away I throw the computer I'd be like I can't do this like I need to walk away because I'm gonna I'm gonna hit my computer and it's not because the assignment's hard I feel like it's just it's in my mind that I look at it and I'm I, I panic I'm getting anxiety looking at all the tools wondering okay how do I approach this, you know, watching your video and going back, but it's just, again, I'm not tech savvy. So my frustration escalates fairly quickly. I like that feedback. And like I said, I got feedback last semester that my assignment, I feel like this first assignment is going to be hard. That's just, I throw you into the fire or, you know, I make you swim right off the bat and it will make everything else feel a little bit easier because this is hard. Um, I don't know if you went through any of the tutorials, but I there's an illustrator in Illustrator. Let me screen share. And I have a video that walks through this. So if I go to Illustrator, let me close these. It'll it'll have all the stuff, my, my stuff up. But if you go to learn, see where I just clicked on learn, you can go through some of these. And this take a tour of the app is really useful. So you can click on this and it'll start a tour of Illustrator for you. And then I also have, let me go to modules. Source control, which one is it? So here's add a background color, start document. Key commands is really useful. Exploring the toolbar. So if you, I'll post the link in an announcement. And again, we're not watching it together because I can barely <laughs> record these things. Uh, I'll post this link in an announcement, but I essentially do that tutorial that I just showed you. And then um, I go through a couple more things. So it'll be really useful. And it's only, oh, this one's like 20 minutes because I do that whole tutorial. So this one's a little bit longer. But a lot of these other ones are really fast, like it, like um, key commands is three minutes. The start a document is two minutes. So you can watch them and go through them really pretty quickly and easily. 
Um, but this one, exploring the toolbar, will help you get a lot more comfortable. And then once you know how to get to everything that you need, um, I think part of the panic is like you'll accidentally close something and you'll be like, where did it go? Or you like it's just not doing what you want it to do and you get really frustrated. So um, if you know how to always get something back or how to always undo something, then you'll feel a little more comfortable moving forward. Um, thank you. I did watch your videos. I didn't watch all of them, but I watched a couple of them just because <laughs> I knew I didn't have all the time to watch all the videos. I know. Sometimes it's honestly easier just to learn by doing and starting and trying to figure it out. And I did get the assignment done. It, I'm not even going to lie. It doesn't look as great as Ashley's does because hers looks so dang good. <laughs> Mine looks literally probably like, I think I told my group last time, like it looks like a little kid drew it. So it looks like a little kid got on like paint on Microsoft and like that's how mine looks. But I was so proud because that took me so freaking long. So when yeah. it was done, I was like, I love it. It's Picasso. I think it's beautiful. Hang in there. And this is where I say, especially for this assignment, um, it's problem solving. So design within your skill set. You don't have to draw fruits this week. You can literally use squares. You can use circles. You can use lines. So problem solve based on what you know you'll be able to accomplish. And hopefully as you move through, hang in there and we'll, I'll help you with that. I really like when students are like, I don't know what I'm doing and are super honest because I can help you move forward because I know what you'll need from me, you know? So just keep telling me if it's hard, just reach out and, and we'll get, we'll get through it. Awesome. Well, thank you for the help. I appreciate it. You have a good night. You too. All right. Professor? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I think this is more, it's kind of like not a challenge, but just kind of like something fun that I thought um, as you were explaining the, the grid that we're doing. So I was wondering if I could do my grid kind of like a, so like for, um, for our assignment for today, I like cut out shapes from like a piece of paper. And I was like wondering if I could do that for like the grid. Yeah, you can. Um, you, I, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. So if it's going to make it more time consuming or harder, mm -hmm. don't do it like that. But if it makes it more fun for you to execute it and a, like more fun to do the, the practice, then absolutely. So okay. it's, it's a, it's a thinking exercise. That's mm -hmm. the grid part of it. So yeah, go for it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. So I think you're up, Arianne. <laughs> okay. So this is what I did. Are you able to see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I went to save it, I don't even know what I'm doing, but that's the best I could do. And this, I spent like, like she was saying a day and a half, two days trying to do this. Um, but when I went to PDF, save it on PDF, it cut the whole bottom off of it. And I cannot figure out why it did that. So if you go, oh, keep screen sharing. Okay. Go over to your layers and see that arrow that's pointing uh, to the right, click on it. So it makes all of your layers go down. down. Okay. <laughs> See how bad that was? Oh yeah, you've got a lot going on. And I kept erasing and then it would disappear and then I would reset it and redo it. And then I would touch something else. And, and then I couldn't even figure out what all this was right here. So I would try to get rid of it. And then the next thing you know, I would wipe everything back off again. So see the eyeballs, uh -huh. that means that whatever object is there is visible. So like you have, you have one layer that's hidden. You have a path right there that's hidden and it's telling you what things are. So if it says path, that means that's a shape that you drew. If it says rectangle means you made a rectangle, which is, are those your lemons? 
Your little lemon squares. This is a lemon and this one is a. a but if you piece. zoom in to that lemon, go grab that magnifying glass over on a, your toolbar. Okay. And then hover over that lemon. Uh -huh. Put it like right on top of one of those rectangles and then click and drag in. Yeah, there you go. So those are your squares. So that's what see over on the layers where it says rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Uh huh. Oh, these ones. Yeah, that's click on that. Uh, go over to your toolbar again, and click okay. on that top arrow, the selection arrow. Now click on that that square. See that uh, blue square that popped over on that rectangle? That's telling you in your layers. So if over you look here. back over at layers, oh, okay, yeah. okay, right there. Yeah, that's telling you that you have that rectangle selected. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I was doing. No, it's okay. I mean, it's, you know, how are you supposed to know? These are things like I know how the layers palette works. I just know. And I didn't even think that maybe that would be something that <laughs> you would get in there and it would confuse you. Um, so I'm glad that you're See, asking I, this question. I don't even know how to take this off. Like when you zoom in, uh huh. I can't even figure out how to take that off. So if you now need to zoom out, uh -huh. is that what you're having trouble with? Yeah. So see how in each tool, there's that little triangle in the corner of each right tool. Right there. Yeah, so click and get the hands and move down to the hand. Now just double click. Go over, sorry, go over to the toolbar and double click it. Like right on top of it. Okay. And that'll doop put everything back in and then see how these are all separate i don't know how to put all these back together so let me screen share with you and then follow along if you can. that might be hard to follow along but let me just show you okay and i did watch the tutorials and i did but then i get how then stuff comes up and you're like ah and my son was trying to help me and he comes in and he's like touching everything and i can't figure out what he's touching <laughs> and he's like just just do it and i'm like uh, i don't know what you're doing yeah don't just just do it just make it happen <laughs> that's what he's telling so me he's okay. like oh my god mom i'm like i'm sorry son so do you have and you have like a real mouse right mm -hmm. not, yeah. not a, i had i had just the, the trackpad mm -hmm. trackpad is a lot harder i think a mouse um is a lot easier to use so I have my artboard here, okay. and if I want to zoom in, I click and I pull it in and I can pull it out. So zooming in and out is which way you're moving the mouse. So right now I'm just moving my mouse back and forth, like I'm going while I'm holding down. Okay. So, and then if you ever get like zoomed in or you're like way off on a I side, mm -hmm. you can hold the space bar down and see how my magnifying glass turns into the hand. Okay. And then you can move around. Okay. And then if you ever just want it just to come back, you just double click on that hand and it'll come okay. back. How so, do you make a circle? <laughs> so, yeah. So if you have, you know, you want to make a circle, you get your ellipse tool okay. and you make a circle, you're clicking and you're holding it down and you're dragging it and then hit shift to make it a perfect circle. So see, I'm turning shift on and off. Okay. Now, if you're doing something with the pen tool, the pen tool, you like if if you have some time this week or you want to try to utilize this for the next assignment, if you get comfortable with the pen tool, you're going to feel like like a rock star. It's going to make everything easier. So um, let me actually pull. Well, that's the different tutorial. Tutorial. So here are the fruits that I used last week. Mm -hmm. Now you can, um, I'm going to put it on the layer just so it doesn't get moved around and make a new layer. Now you could draw everything with the pen tool, but I like to push you as students to see how you can make things up with shapes mm -hmm. because it just saves a lot of time. 
but I'm going to zoom way in here and show you some quick pen tool techniques. So let me move that over because I don't want being in the middle of the artboard to confuse you. So the pen tool works. I saw you had the pencil tool at one point. And like, say I try to draw a lemon with the pencil tool, I'm just kind of actually drawing, which is really hard. And then it kept going away just like that. So I was freaking out. You know out. why? So you know why I did that? Because I'm drawing, I was drawing on the layer that I have locked. See how it's locked over here? Mm -hmm. So because I was trying to draw on this layer that I have locked, it's just, it's not doing anything because that layer is locked. Okay. So, so I see it I'm, right there on the top, yeah. okay. Now you can also make the same mistake by trying to draw on a layer and not having, see, I just turned off the fill and the, the stroke color. Mm -hmm. So I could also draw on a layer and then not have a fill and stroke selected and think I lost it, but it is actually there. There's just no color attached to it. See, and I, I couldn't even get the color in. So that was like an obstacle. <laughs> So if that happened to me and I know I drew something, but I can't find it and I'm clicking around and I can't find it. And look, mm -hmm. you can go down on your layers and there is a path. I know I made that path. I just don't know where it is on my artboard. I can just hit select all and that's command A or control A on your keyboard and it'll open every, it'll grab everything. Okay. So then you can see it again. So then if I apply a stroke color to it, this, just so I can see it. You'll see with the pencil tool, it's it's really hard to draw with this pencil tool because it's like actually drawing, but less control. But like a, yes, less control. So you have to, if you are drawing with the pencil tool and you want it to be an enclosed shape, you have to actually finish your line and reconnect it to the end. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it's going to stay open, even if I just kind of do it. Mm -hmm. So if I zoom into what I just did here, see how it still has a point here and a point right. here, it's not actually closed. Right. And this one I did close, but let me show you the difference with the pen tool. So I grab this pen tool and I zoom in here to this cherry. And I start here by clicking. I'm gonna start right in the middle and I click and I made a point mm -hmm. and then I move over here and I'm not clicking anymore. I'm just moving the mouse over but now I'm clicking and I'm pulling and it's creating these toggle points. Okay. So now I have these toggle points. I'm still pressing down with my finger and now I release it. And then I move over here with the mouse and then I click and I pr pull again. So I'm pulling my mouse down to create new toggle points. And I'm just following this all the way around. Okay. Now, if I do this to get the shape all the way around, when I get back to where I started, see that little circle? Mm -hmm. So it's telling me right here, it's not connected. It'll give me that circle and that circle indicator next to that pen is telling me, do you want to close this shape? And I do, so I click there. Okay. And now I can take this other arrow, which is the direct selection arrow. So this is the selection arrow. It picks up the whole thing. And then the direct selection arrow will let me just grab certain points and I can adjust these by pulling on the toggles. Okay. And pulling the points till it's the shape that I want it to be. Okay. That's the only way I was able to try to do the, the peach was kind of like, that. <laughs> but again, I didn't know what I was doing still. Yeah. So if, um, does what I show you already help a lot? Okay. Yes. The the other only thing is that, that I can't figure out why the other the piece of the lemon cut in half when I try to do the PDF on it. So it might have been when you exported it, mm -hmm. it got cut in half. So it could have been off the artboard if you had like say like here's this layer and it was going past this artboard. Mm. You don't think that was it? Because mm -mm. it had the black, but the yellow was gone. Um, why don't you screen share with me and let me see. Okay. 
Let me see where it was at now. I think it's on this one. No. That's oh, I like yours. <laughs> Thank you. Where is it at now? Let me see if I can even find it. So it was like that and it was in a file. See all these? <laughs> Jesus. If you find the bad one, oh, there you uh -huh. go. So you're on your artboard. Okay, so where are the ones that this part right here was missing? All the yellow was, it was white, but the black was still there when I PDF'd it. Hmm. Do you want to email me that PDF and I'll take a look at it? Because okay. I'm not quite sure. But I can open up your PDF and maybe figure out what went wrong. Uh-huh. Um, it doesn't look like looking there at your ear. Can you see it? No, I can't. I can't see it. Okay, hold on. I'm going to redo it again. Oh. Because I was trying to do some of the this and I was trying to add the little for the lemon and I shaded him, but then I cannot figure out for the life of me why that kept happening. Something's either over the top of it or it got cut off. If you email me this PDF, I'll open it up and figure it out. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, just so that. we know, just so we know for future. So, and then the other piece, is it due tonight or um, no? What we're doing today. This is technically due today, but if you want some more time, that's totally fine. Um, the, no, the assignment you gave us today. Next week. Next week. Okay, so the one that we did with the graphing and the pat patterns and all that? That'll be next week, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is technically due today. And like I said, these assignments, when it's a 10-point assignment, it's really a pass-fail situation. Okay. So if you even just want to upload this, you're good. <laughs> it's so okay. that you learn, and I know that you're practicing. I'm trying. Um, yeah. Uh, but your project, that's where you get to be really creative. You want to put a lot of time into the poster. Um, and like I said, too, with the grid, the grid is a like a mental exercise to get you thinking about how these things combined. Don't spend as much time on it as you do your poster. Put most of your thought into the poster. Okay. All right. Thank you. But you're doing good. It's It's a learning process. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, well, is that is that it for today? Okay, I think we are good. Good night.